The work that we do all year is reflected in this luncheon today. And it's so much a part of the, a reflection of the hard work and the really creative, brilliant thinking that companies are doing all over the country as they sit and think about what can we do to advance women? What are we taking? Uh, what steps are we taking? And as they evaluate everything that they have done to, uh, to advance women. And these are the, the companies that are involved in this great initiative uh, that we call the Top Companies for Executive Women that's all about getting women into those excruciatingly high-level jobs at our companies. We love filling this hall with companies that know what's important to women, that know that women's success is your success. Today we celebrate women and the difference we make. Today we pay homage to women leaders because when women lead, we see remarkable results for our companies, for our country, and for the ecosphere. How I got to where I am now was really most impacted by an event that was actually mid of my career. After 18 years of retail merchandise management, increasingly, you know, more complex responsibilities, I made a strategic decision to enter the manufacturing and supply chain industry. Uh, to great chagrin from my colleagues, my family, my spouse, everyone thought I'd kind of lost my mind after that many years of retail. It turned out to allow me to stretch new muscles um, in classical branding, which I wanted to understand, uh, classical CPG merchandising, and really how to run a P&L from the supply chain side. That has become so critical to my ability to run a sourcing division for a company the size and scale of Walmart. We're very much the largest retailer, but in many ways we're also the largest manufacturer. So I've had the benefit and the blessing of both skill sets in my career, and that turned out to be much more of a strategically correct uh, decision than, than some might have thought at the time. A big lesson for me of that was don't be afraid to take risks, don't be afraid to jump in and stretch new muscles, don't be afraid to appear to start over, if you will, uh, because you always have that skill set that you left and you just broaden your horizons with what you learned in the new. There were several times throughout my career where I thought I had made a strategically horrific error and needed to adjust. And what I've come to learn is in each of those instances, um, staying the course, um, I learned to trust that you can't always see around the corner. No matter how planful you are about your career, how many objectives you set for yourself, those are all good and they're important. But around the corner are often things in your career you can't see at the time and each one of those roles ends up being something you leverage into the next role. So I don't have remorse or regret about any decisions I made or any um, experiences I had. Uh, and I think that perspective has helped me. But I won't say that they weren't bumpy and that I didn't doubt at times. I think you have to have a lot of faith in yourself, trust your gut, trust your instincts, and, and your career turns out pretty well for you. If I say personally, a regret that I have is that early in my career, I was the classic attempting to be superwoman. And I was so focused on making sure that, that I was standing tall on being, representing women and being a career woman that I did forfeit some valuable time with my children early on. Um, quickly corrected that, I've learned that it's not about work-life balance, it's work-life efficiency. Was fortunate to learn that early on, but I believe I could have relaxed a bit and enjoyed my kids when they were younger. And I think I probably have many women that share, share that, that feeling. Young women entering the workforce today have a unique challenge, very different challenges from women of my generation. Our generation were the scrappers and fighters. We were proving so hard the business case for why women were a powerful force um, to future businesses. And today's young female doesn't have to meet those challenges. We've broken through a lot of those ceilings today. So while our generation maybe had l fewer networks, it was a little bit more lonely at the top, uh, we didn't have the same role models. At the same time, we were advantaged by if we worked hard, our singularity gave us presence and separated and differentiated us. That's why you see our generation had a lot of 
firsts. They were the first CEO or the first president or the first director or the first board member. A young woman today is entering a field that is, is much fuller. So their unique challenge is how do they separate themselves? How do they find a way to prove their unique differentiation, their value is recognized? Uh, Sheryl Sandberg called it lean in. Uh, I fully agree with that and I'd even build on that and say a young woman today needs to lean in or risk being left out because they won't be part of the equation if they don't stand out amongst their peers.